Teachworth with TrueNamics, and today we have some quick thoracic spine self-care movement. So we are very passionate about movement and mobility in the thoracic spine, and since we tend to live in a world where we're sort of sitting or doing more sagittal plane motion, phones, computers, driving, all of that kind of drives our thoracic spine into flexion. We start to lose our uh, battle with gravity as opposed to having a nice, open, upright relationship with gravity. So we wanna give you some quick self-care movements that you can do to bring all of that mobility back into the thoracic spine, which goes a long way to help the shoulders feel freer, the cervical spine, lumbar spine, hips all the way down to the knees and the feet. Everything's able to move better, do its job better when the thoracic spine is also moving. So we can start just by kind of being aware, you know, thoracic spine is that space between the cervical spine, the lumbar spine, you have 12 vertebrae in there, and they should all move through all planes of motion. So start by just focusing on that part of the spine and moving through each plane, focusing on the extension aspect, the, the gliding and the facets that needs to happen when you do that, and move a bit through all planes. You can imagine the ribs very movable in the rib basket. It kind of fans out on the side as you're doing side flexion. So focus rather than moving at the lumbar spine or just the neck, really fanning out through the thoracic portion of the spine. And we can do the same thing in rotation. Again, we'll tend to get our rotation from the cervical spine or the lumbars. Lumbars don't have a lot of rotation and the cervical spine, we could easily, you know, just force it and strain there too much. So we wanna make sure the thoracic spine can move. So put a hand at the upper portion of your um, sternum, and then the other hand kind of right below your xiphoid process. We're spanning that whole thoracic spine, and then rotate, but pull your hands in opposite directions. This is how we can ensure we're actually rotating to, through the thoracic spine. Because the upper hand should go with you, you wanna pull that in the direction you're turning, the other hand you can pull in the opposite direction, so really rotate through the whole thoracic spine. My head is just kind of facing whichever direction my chest is facing. And then we do that in the other direction. So now I'm pushing the upper hand uh, towards the direction I'm rotating. The other hand is pushing the opposite direction. So making sure I'm rotating in the thoracic spine, the part of the spine I want to mobilize. And then we can add planes of motion together. This is where the thoracic spine is really genius in its design, that it can do multiple planes together. So we could rotate, again, make sure we're in the thoracic spine, not just the lumbars or the cervicals, rotate, and then we can add flexion and extension. Focusing on the thoracic spine, so I'm not too worried about big extension in the head, I could actually cheat myself out of the thoracic spine movement if I just do head movement. See, no thoracic spine. So really focus on that thoracic spine mobility and then side bending there as well in rotation. So I'm combining the motions. And then we go to the other side, same thing, rotate thoracic spine, not just head or lumbars, and then add flexion and extension of the thoracics. You might notice one side feels easier or different from the other. Add side bending. Good, and just that little bit, even just being aware of, oh, do I tend to always yank my neck or am I always kind of uh, grinding my lumbar spine? Or do I have that nice dynamic thoracic spine? So you might already be more aware and definitely feeling freer and more mobile through that whole area. Take a breath. You might notice the breath is full and freer and the shoulders feel up and back. So let's add on to that a bit. <clears throat> One of the things we could do is take the arms up overhead. So if this is just, if I'm like sitting at an office all day, great way to start working through that extension. Adding the limbs, the arm, gives us just something different to drive with. So I can put that into flexion and extension but we want to add those other ranges of motion. So reach up and back, and then go side to side. We're going side to side as we lean back. Again, make sure we're looking up so we get a little extension, um, and also that the movement is happening through the thoracic spine. So you should feel length through here, not just in the neck or the lower body. 
And then we can bring the arms down, stay in extension, and move through rotation. Make sure that rotation is happening in, you guessed it, thoracic spine, and keep the chin lifted. So we might cheat this by bringing the head down. Nope, not what we want, head lifted, chest lifted, rotation. So doing that, just that little bit, as a work break, you know, once an hour, every 20 minutes, we should take a little movement break. That's gonna help you feel nice and upright. We could add on to that though, by coming to stand, because what's happening at the front of the hip is definitely impacting the thoracic spine and the shoulders. So when you first get up sometimes, you might notice you feel a little tight and stiff at the hip flexors, even the adductors. If we're always training those to be short, notice when you try to lift the arms, get a lot of strain in the shoulder and not a lot of movement in the thoracic spine. So we can open up through there by stepping into a lunge. Doesn't matter, whichever leg you wanna do first. And then we'll do basically what we just did on the chair, but now we're standing. So we can move in and out, focus on extension. Now it could be easy for this movement to go right into the lower back. We don't wanna concentrate it in the lower back. So think about taking the hips forward, a little up with the pubic bone, and then concentrate the movement in the mid and upper back, the thoracic spine. And then stay in that extension and take it side to side. Keep breathing, nice deep breaths. We'll work with the diaphragm there. And then in rotation. Now we can add another layer by moving into side bending and then do the other two motions. So I can side bend and do flexion and extension and do rotation and side bend the other direction and do flexion and extension and rotation. So just work to the level that feels good for you. Sit back, take a moment and then shift to the other side. I'll just buzz right through for you so we're lunging, focusing on our extension, and then side to side, stay in the lunge, and rotation, and maybe that's plenty for you. If you haven't done a lot of thoracic spine mobility, that could be good. If you feel like you can add more, lean to the side and add that layered motion together. So flexion and extension, again, try to focus thoracic spine, rotation, I keep saying it because every new position, your body might find a way to compensate. <laughs> so we want to be aware of where movement is happening. Good. Oh yeah, other side. Don't forget. Flexion and extension. And rotation. Ooh, good. And then notice your posture. Hopefully feeling nice and upright, lifted. You might feel, I even have like, ooh, I'm almost leaning back because front of the body is feeling a nice lift and freedom. Now one more piece to put this into motion. When we step, we want to get some rotation through the thoracic spine. So we could exaggerate that and work it a bit by reaching across the body, palm up, and then take the leg back and reach across. I'm going to try not to hit my tree here. Let me go sideways. <clears throat> so. I'm swinging leg in front, reaching across about 45 degrees, palm up, and then switch and reach with the other arm. So we're getting that rotation now. I can keep my head turning forward so I also get counter rotation between the thoracic spine and the cervical spine, something I also need when I walk. So really get that reach and length. We can feel it all the way from leg to uh, arm, foot to hand reach. And with any of these, you could do all sorts of variations. If I wanted to add some side bending, I can do that. There's no like, this is the exercise. Really, it's just move your body in three planes of motion. So we'll take it to the other side, stepping the other leg forward and back. Palm up as you reach across the body. Head stays up. All right, so reaching across the body at about a 45 degree angle as you twist. 
Now make sure that that reach, if I just reach like this, I'm not actually using my thoracic spine, I'm just using my shoulder. So make sure as you reach, that reach is coming from thoracic spine, out the arm. Boom, boom. Okay, so all of that hopefully gives you something to work with. Notice the freedom you're feeling in thoracic spine and then how that affects your neck, your shoulder girdle movement, your arm movement, all the way down into the limbs, the lower back. I hope that's helpful. You have some good clues how to mobilize your thoracic spine and understand the effect of the thoracic spine on the rest of the body. You can check out our full hour long functional stretch video that's available with our online courses at trinamics.com. Also our structural dynamics assessment class goes through assessments, structural and functional for every part of the body, foot to head. So that can give you more clues about how to look at what's moving in your clients, what's not moving in your clients, and where you might want to go to work with that. I hope those are helpful resources for you and we'll see you soon.